we've all experienced those listless moments when just getting up in the morning is more than we can handle. For most of us, this lack of energy is usually not all that serious. But for many other species, a moment of weakness can mean instant death. Indeed, the survival of every organism depends upon securing a constant supply of energy. Energy, which can be obtained in one of two ways. Directly, by harnessing the power of the sun. Or, indirectly. No matter what we eat, whether steak and potatoes, or jelly beans, the body extracts energy from whatever food enters the stomach. Our digestive machinery breaks down food into macromolecules, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Though energy is obtained from all three food types, carbohydrates usually provide the bulk of it. Carbohydrates are often long chain molecules made up of repeating units of the sugar glucose, symbolized here in this form. Through the process of cellular respiration, enzymes within the cells break the chemical bonds in glucose, liberating its stored energy. To most of us, respiration means the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the lungs. But cellular respiration, occurring in individual cells, involves much more than just this gas exchange. For our purposes, the cell will simply consist of the cell membrane, nucleus, cytosol, and mitochondria. Each cell contains several mitochondria. Together, they provide the cell with energy to carry out its various functions. However, to avoid cluttering our model, we'll show just one mitochondrion. Inside, the mitochondrion has two lipid membranes and its own unique genetic material. The inner membrane is convoluted in a series of folds called cristae, which create a greater surface area where chemical reactions can occur. Beyond the inner membrane is the mitochondrial matrix, which like the cell cytosol, is a fluid. Indeed, the mitochondrion, so crucial to powering cells, is organized like a simple cell. This observation prompted the thought that mitochondria may well be descendants of simple photosynthetic bacteria. It's theorized that about 1.5 billion years ago, these bacteria were absorbed by primitive cells. Surviving the cell's defense mechanisms, they divided on their own. And over time, they adapted their photosynthetic machinery to evolve the mechanics of cellular respiration. In fact, biochemists have uncovered startling similarities between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Similarities supporting the hypothesis that plant and animal life have a common origin. Yet, while photosynthesis stores the energy of the sun in carbohydrates, cellular respiration reverses the process by releasing the energy of carbohydrates. The monumental breakthrough of cellular respiration produced the cell prototype for all plants and animals. These super cells ably converted raw fuel to useful energy and brought about the proliferation of countless types of life forms. Today, we take glucose obtained from the intestine together with oxygen from the lungs and transport them via the circulatory system to the cells. 
Once inside the cell, glucose and oxygen react to release energy, carbon dioxide, and water. Glucose carries a lot of energy, around 160 kilojoules per mole. Yet, two molecules attempting to come together may require as little as 1.2 kilojoules per mole of reactant. Thus, glucose as a direct energy source would be an extreme case of overkill. But the events occurring within the cell harness the energy of glucose by transferring portions of it to the energy-carrying molecules of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. So, when two molecules require energy to react, ATP provides just the right amount of energy, about 1% of the energy of a glucose molecule, or roughly 1.8 kilojoules per mole. If we look closely at a molecule of ATP, we begin to understand how it plays such an important role in cell reactions. Adenosine triphosphate consists of the nitrogenous base adenine, the sugar ribose, and three phosphate groups. Though one might think it is the sugar which gives ATP its energy, in fact, it is the phosphate tail which provides the energy. And biologists often represent the tail's energy in this way, as a single high energy bond. But it is actually the four negative charges localized in the phosphate groups that explains ATP's volatile nature. These charge groups have a strong repulsion for each other. But unable to overcome the bonds that join them, they create a highly energetic molecule. For our purposes, we will represent ATP like this, with cylinders symbolizing the three phosphate groups. When ATP and a molecule come together and react, the molecule picks up a phosphate group, leaving behind adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. With the transfer of one phosphate, ATP has spread its negative charges and transferred energy to the molecule. Having gained a phosphate, the molecule is phosphorylated. With the aid of an enzyme, the now activated molecule can undergo further change, releasing the phosphate and enzyme. By creating a phosphorylated intermediate molecule, ATP provides that vital link in the synthesis of a product. The ingredients are present and the stage is set. In the following programs, we will examine the three major phases of cellular respiration. Glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation.